And welcome back here on the Elm Street Park Network. Top half of the fourth inning getting set to get underway. We're going to have a pinch hitter here stepping into the plate. For Brown and Woods, it's going to be Mitchell Patrick. Patrick will step in. He's hitting for Tristan Whitehead in the eighth spot. So 8-9-1 coming up here. Welcome back, everyone. Travis Warren here. Croft Massey as well. Or excuse me, Croft Massey alongside Travis Warren. That's the better way to explain that, I guess. <laughs> As Mitch, or excuse me, yes, Mitchell Patrick will take a ball low. Karen Smith wants to know what kind of camera we're using for the live stream, and we'll see if we can get that answer for you here, Karen. We are going to try our best. Two balls and no strikes now to Mitchell Patrick. Patrick steps in from the right side, again hitting in the eighth spot, so 8-9-1 coming up for Brownwood. They lead it 3 to nothing here in the top of the fourth. Second game of the day. Carolina Windows and Doors winners in the first game by a count of 14 to 2, I believe, over Ross in uh, game one of the day. Four games on tap. We've got a 5.30 and a 7.30 to follow. We have uh, Jarman Auto Sales against Physicians East at 5.30 and uh, Host Lions and Pepsi Cola at 7.30. Shout out to my main man on the staff, Kevin Stallings at Jarman Auto Sales. <laughs> if you're tuned in, man. Okay, got a, okay. KK, looking to get another big dub for, uh, what do they call Jarman now, Scott? The Evil Empire. The Evil Empire. There they are. Very fitting. It is indeed, because I'm telling you, like, when I was in Little League, they absolutely dominated as Patrick draws a walk here to start things in the top of the fourth. They dominated when I was in Little League, and they're still dominating here today, it seems like. Granted, they're 6-2 and two on the season. <laughs> hey. But there's still complain about there. It's yeah. a log jam in the Tar Heel. No, region. absolutely. Brown and Wood, in fact, as we have a uh, visit here from manager Ryan Deloach trying to settle down his pitcher. As uh, we've got another pitch hitter, Brady Walker, going to step in. He's going to hit for Landon Congleton in the nine spot. And uh, yeah, well, uh, Coach Stantz plays this last time uh, in this situation, leadoff batter on. He, he laid out a bunt, so we'll see what happens here. Yes, indeed. So we'll see it here. He's giving his signs to the young Brady Walker. Brady Walker stepping in again from the right-hand side of the plate. The runner on first, Mitchell Patrick, who stepped in and drew a leadoff walk as Brandon Wood looking to open this thing up. They lead it 3 to nothing here in the top of the fourth as the first pitch to Brady Walker is in there for strike one. Good-looking pitch there from Holden DeLoach. Yeah, good first pitch to get ahead. There's the bunt. Good and bunt. there's a bunt, lays it down the third base side, and a nice play by the third baseman, fires over to first. That's Thomas Satterfield. Satterfield fielded that ball cleanly and fired a strike over to John Lysick at first base. And that's the first out of the inning, but a beautiful job there by Brady Walker to do the job and sacrifice the runner over. Yeah, that was a great bunt. Got the bat out in front of him, laid it down perfectly. Good bunt. So one out here, that'll flip things to the top of the order here. Harrison Corey will step in. Corey singled his last at bat, drove in a run before Optimus was able to catch a base runner off to end that uh, inning. But it was a beautiful hit there by Harrison Corey in his last at bat to drive in the third run of the ball game. He's looking for more here. He's got a runner in scoring position. He's ahead in the count, one ball and no strikes. Pitch from Deloach, catches the outside corner. To even things up at a ball and a strike here with one out in the top of the fourth. So a big shout out here to Judy Satterfield. She is out here supporting uh, Thomas and the rest of the Optimus crew watching from Bayview. So thank you for tuning in, Judy. Good job for holding here, getting ahead of the leadoff batter. It's a good, good pitch. One oh, ball, two strike, short. rounded over to shortstop. Nice play there by Lysay. And he drops it. He fielded it first. It was about to be a beautiful play, but just unable to handle the ground ball. No advancement there. Great base running there by Mitchell Patrick as well. Most times you see the runner immediately take off there, yep. but you got to see it through. It looked like that, uh, that ball took off on him a little bit too. A little top spin and may have caught the uh, front lip on that infield here. Certainly indeed, Travis is a tough hop, so tough there. Tough break there for Lysick in the Optimus defense as Brown and Wood now has runners on first and second here in the top of the fourth with one out, and they'll bring up that'll bring up here Sully Cobb. 
Cobb steps in from the left side of the plate. Cobb is over two on the day. And the first pitch he sees is outside for ball one. One ball, no strikes, one out. The runner on first is Harrison Corey. And the runner on second is Mitchell Patrick for Brown and Wood. The car dealers looking to extend their lead. Three to nothing here in the top of the fourth. Cobb shows bunt, tries to go down the third baseline, but it's going to trickle foul. And that will even the count to one ball and one strike. That was more Travis. The uh, He looks like he was bunting uh, for a hit, hit there. Absolutely. Indeed. Yeah, third baseman staying back a little bit, and then he tried to uh, push it that way. And he almost executed that to perfection, but it just caught the dirt there and kept going foul. Got a force here at any bag. This is, um, you know, we talked about it before, but this is a big spot for Optimus and Brown and Wood. Brown and Wood can extend that lead, or Optimus can, you know, keep it close and have a shot in the top of the fourth. As the 1-1 one -one pitch is popped up to the catcher. Play. Nice play there by our catcher. That's a beautiful play by the catcher for Optimus. That's Isaac Zip. Callis, yep. who's starting pitcher. our starting pitcher, and a big second out there. So runners will have to, of course, hold up. So first and second, a huge second out because that's bringing up the three-hitter, Tice Thompson Thompson. If you weren't tuning in before, Drill went off the wall, and it looks like they're going to put him on. They're going to put him on, and Thompson not happy about it. But the strategic move made by Ryan DeLoach and the coaching staff for Optimus to load the bases. They don't want to pitch to Tyus Thompson, don't want to play around with it. So the big three hitter will trot on down to first base, and that will bring up Cade Butcher. Butcher also a single in his last at bat. He is one for two on the day with a run driven in. You know, it's a tough play for uh, the catcher for Optimus there, Isaac Callis. That ball uh, wasn't up too high, and he had to pop the mask off, find it, and uh, make the play. That was a good play. Big out, too. Very good play indeed, Travis. So two outs now, and the bases are loaded top of the fourth. Cade Butcher, first pitch swinging, and it's going to be caught. Nice, nice play. play there by That's Drew Lysett. Runs over just to the right of second base behind the bag and makes the grab. And the threat again denied here. Nice job by the Optimus defense. They get out of it with no runs allowed. They trail three to nothing. We head to the bottom of the fourth. Stay tuned for more here on the Elm Street Park Network. Back right after this. 